No one likes being stuck in traffic. It's noisy and stressful, and more often than not, it causes you to arrive late. What if we could avoid traffic entirely? Sounds pretty nice. But what if we could not only avoid traffic, but get where we're going in a matter of minutes rather than hours, and at a price far less expensive than that of an airline ticket? Back in 2013, Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk first announced his goal to make that vision a reality with an ambitious project called the Hyperloop. Since then, Musk has made the idea open source, allowing and encouraging teams around the world to make Hyperloop a reality. The project's ultimate goal is to revolutionize transportation as we know it by shuttling people and cargo between destinations at speeds exceeding those of commercial airliners, all at the price of a bus ticket. Musk wants the Hyperloop to transport its first cargo by 2020, and its first human passengers by 2021. Having a functional Hyperloop by 2020 is an exciting idea to be sure, but is it actually feasible? To answer that question, let's start by examining the history of tube travel. The idea of moving people and goods by pneumatic tube has actually been around for quite some time. It was first proposed way back in 1799, when British mechanical engineer and inventor George Medhurst took out a patent to transport goods by airtight metal tube. Thirteen years later, he wrote a book on the subject, though he never pursued the idea himself. Throughout the 1800s, there were several attempts at implementing what commonly became known as atmospheric railways, which included anything that used differential air pressure to provide power for propulsion. One of the very earliest incarnations of an air pressure power transport operated for just two months in 1864 in South London. It was called the Crystal Palace Pneumatic Railway, which was a very grand name for what amounted to a single train coach propelled by a large fan down 550 meters of track. The Crystal Palace is thought to have been a prototype for a proper pneumatic railway that would have stretched from Waterloo to Whitehall, a project that was later cancelled. Fast forward to the 1910s and we get the first concepts of vacuum trains from American rocket pioneer Robert Goddard. It's these reduced pressure or vacuum propelled transportation apparatus that seem to have the most in common with the modern Hyperloop. Throughout the 200 or so year history of tube transportation, we've seen a series of failed prototypes and novelty patents, but no real successes. With that in mind, will the Hyperloop be any different? Let's look at some numbers. Musk envisions cutting the travel time between Los Angeles and San Francisco to a mere 35 minutes. He's proposed building a high-speed transportation system that would allow humans to travel at over 1,200 kilometers per hour, or just shy of the speed of sound. That's 610 kilometers, or 380 miles, in just over half an hour. That would indeed revolutionize transportation if such a system could be built. So, could it? On the surface, the idea seems simple. A long tube, very little friction, and pods that carry people and cargo. In reality, there are a number of critical factors that need to be addressed. First is the issue of temperature variations affecting the length of the tube. For example, on a hot day, the metal of the tube would expand, causing its length to vary significantly over the 610 km distance. Modern bridges often use what are called expansion joints to account for shifting temperatures. The only problem with using such expansion joints on an airtight tube is that, well, it wouldn't be airtight anymore. The brains behind the various Hyperloop projects plan to counter the problem of temperature variation another way. The current suggested solution is adding what basically equate to giant expansion joints at either end of the tube. By giant, I mean these things will have to be huge, and allow over 300 meters of movement between them to compensate for the maximum amount of thermal expansion. They'd be very similar in design to the extendable walkways used to board aircraft. Some people speculate that allowing for such a huge range of variation simply isn't feasible, and any significant change in length could have disastrous effect on the tube system. Another problem is the current state of transport pods. In January of 2017, 30 teams were selected from over 100 applicants to compete in the final round of a SpaceX-sponsored Hyperloop pod design competition. These finalists all built prototype pods and competed for a chance to make a test run through a 1.6km segment of Hyperloop test track. During this final stage of the competition, each pod was put through a series of 9 tests, and only if they passed those tests would they be able to advance to the main event, a test run in the Hypertube. Of the 27 teams that competed, only 3 made it through to the trial run. Of the three finalists, only one pod made it all the way through the tube successfully. The main problem is that the whole setup is an assortment of prototypes, from the tube to the propulsion methods to the pods themselves. The pods are significantly smaller than they'd have to be in a commercial format. The tube itself had dust problems, and the propulsion method was a small electric vehicle that pushed the test pods a quarter of the way down the track, which would not be the case in a full-scale Hyperloop. Of course, at this early stage, there's not really much you can do but use prototypes. Every mechanical failure and design flaw is an opportunity for improvement, and that was the whole purpose of the competition. All current challenges aside, what effect would a finished Hyperloop have on modern transportation? If Elon Musk's vision becomes a reality, the changes would be dramatic. First, traffic could become a thing of the past. 
If Hyperloop tickets are as inexpensive as they're projected to be, many people would gladly pay to completely bypass their busy commute. With fewer people on the roads, that means less potential for accidents and fewer fatalities. Not only would there be fewer people in cars, but also a drastically reduced number of semi-trucks. Large transport trucks were the cause of almost 4,000 deaths in 2015, with 69% of those deaths being occupants of smaller cars. If these cargo trucks were replaced by cargo pods in the Hyperloop, we'd see a significant reduction of fatal crashes, traffic slowdowns, and presumably get the added benefit of faster transfer of goods from one place to another via the Hyperloop. Another important factor to consider is the economic impact not only on companies, but also on individuals. Driving from London to Manchester takes about four hours, or two hours by train. A Hyperloop ride between the two cities would take just 20 minutes. That's great for commuters, but the biggest benefit to the individual is the ability to live in a less expensive area, save money, and still be able to work in London's booming economy. Property prices in Manchester are about one-tenth of what you can expect to see in London, which makes for huge savings. For businesses, the Hyperloop would open up a massive new population of workers able to commute into the city during the day and back home in the evening, a trip that would be time and cost prohibitive without this new mode of transportation. The Hyperloop would also allow for a sort of cross-pollination between cultural hubs. A ride from Stockholm to Helsinki would take 28 minutes, connecting the two economies and those of the smaller cities in the surrounding areas, which would redefine regions and cultural hubs as we understand them. No longer would it be unreasonable to live 200 kilometers from work, or 300, or even 500. The Hyperloop would open up many new possibilities for the workforce of the near future. Would it become the most popular method of transportation? Maybe. Some people are concerned that the massive length and fragile nature of the tube would be a tempting target for terrorist attacks. And perhaps that thought would steer some people away from using the Hyperloop at first. However, if it does all it's projected to do, if it allows people to travel across huge distances in a short amount of time, if it's cheaper than a plane ticket, and if it's truly safe to use, then yes, the Hyperloop could very well become the transportation method of the future. Yes, there are many obstacles to overcome before it becomes a reality, but to all those who say it's impossible, remember that progress is made by pushing the envelope and doing things that others consider crazy. Consider this quote from the Quarterly Review in 1825. What can be more palpably absurd than the prospect held out of locomotives traveling twice as fast as stagecoaches? Hyperloop One is currently building the first full-scale and full-speed prototype called DevLoop in the deserts of Nevada, and hope to hit their 1200 km per hour speed goal by the end of 2017. The Hyperloop is still a very young technology, and despite its many challenges and barriers to success, it will most definitely be exciting to watch it grow into what will hopefully become a revolutionary shift in transportation. If you'd like to learn more about the Hyperloop and tube transport, check out the links in the description. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and follow Second Thought on your favorite social media. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.